Now, what is reading knitting? It sounds like a very strange phrase because you read the knitting pattern while you're knitting. This is something uncanny that in some ways is you know that you're doing it when you're doing it. So let's pick it apart and see exactly what it means. So reading your knitting is from the perspective of the knitter. And to be able to do this, you can do this on straight needles, and I will talk about circular needles later on um, as we get through. But there are lots of examples of when it's important to be able to read your knitting. As I go through this video, I would love it if you would sit there with your knitting and look at your knitting. Because if you get your knitting out while you're listening and watching this video, you'll be able to say, hey, I do know that or I don't know that. I do understand that or I don't understand that. If I sit here with my own project and show you in great depth what my project looks like, that isn't helpful to what you're knitting at the moment. So you can re-watch this video with any knitting pattern that you're doing if you want and say, have I used all of those tips? Do I need to do something extra? Is there something that I'm doing that maybe feels extra complicated so I need to do it more quietly? All of those things might be helpful as you go through this video. I hope that's a helpful point. So there are four things that's really important when you come to reading your knitting. It's about looking at your knitting and saying, big picture, I know where I am, I know what I'm doing next, I know what I've done before, and I know where I'm going in the larger scheme of the pattern. So it's being able to see what is there in front of you and understand it. If you don't understand it and you just kind of look at it and go, is it, I've, I know I've been knitting but I'm not sure exactly what and why and where and how I, what I do next, then that isn't being able to read your knitting. That's feeling a bit lost. So being able to read your knitting is part of the skill of knitting and it's something you can get more and more used to and something you can understand more as you get more into the knitting hobby and as you practice more knitting. And I would say being able to read your knitting and understand what it is can be very important to actually learn right near the beginning of knitting. So if you don't know what reading your knitting is and you don't understand the knitting in front of you, Take some time over the next few projects to just think about these points that I'm going to extrapolate on in a minute and explain why these points are so important. Okay, get to know your knitting, learn to read your knitting. That's what we're going to do today. So I am Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you knit with ease, confidence and joy. And yeah, it will be more joyful if you can understand your knitting while you're knitting. <laughs> so the first point is to be able to see the stitches on the needle that are right in front of you. As an example, I have stitches on my needle in front of me that have just fallen off. That's good, isn't it? Um, you know what these stitches are. You look at them and you say, yep, I know where that is. I know what I'm doing. As you see the already knitted fabric in front of you, are you able to process what you've done so far? See how many stitches you've made. You can count the stitches on your needle. You can look at it and go, that's where I've been. That's where I'm going next. So the first point is already knowing what you've knitted, being able to look at it and say, I think I've done all right. It looks like it's supposed to look. And you could also look at it and go, hey, that looks a bit odd. What have I done wrong? And the second point is being able to judge which row is next and which stitch is next. Looking at the individual stitches and saying, is that a knit stitch? Is that a purl stitch? That's the very fundamental basics of it. But we go further in knitting. We look further in knitting and we get more complicated as the stitches move on. So that's a very important point. Which stitch is next and which row is next? So do go and have a look at the video that I created right at the beginning of my YouTube channel. It was a question that I would get from knitters around me. Knitters who didn't have that much experience, who weren't knitting continuously throughout their year. 
and would pick up the knitting and kind of go, is that a knit row? Is that a purl row? How do I tell the knit stitches and purl stitches apart? So they would come to me in our knitting group because they knew I was a confident knitter and I am, as you can tell on YouTube, I'm not a bad teacher as well. They would come to me and say, what's a knit stitch and what's a purl stitch? So that was one of the first videos that was put on my channel because it was one of the first questions that I was getting. So, can you look at what you're going, can you look at what you're knitting and say, okay, I understand what I've done, that looks like decent fabric. Can you also look at your knitting and say, I know what's next. I know what stitch is next and I know what row is next. Okay. Now this also has to do with being able to correlate what you've knitted with what you're reading on the knitting pattern. So I just want to slip this in as a fifth point right now. Because if you look at your knitting and go, hey, that looks good, but then you look at the knitting pattern and you feel confused, we need to match the two together. And this is where, um, what I was doing when I was an early knitter, um, I would sit there with a packet of post-it notes. Um, I chop my post-it notes up now because I've got a massive bulletin. So I, I make them much smaller. <laughs> you can sit there with a larger post-it note, write down the names of the rows or row one, two, three, four, five, or something like that, and tick them off as you go. Um, I used to write something like knit 15 rows and I would tick each row off as I went. And that kind of thing can just keep you on track with the pattern. Um, you can stick your post-it on the pattern without scribbling all over the pattern. And then you won't be able to re-knit that same item. And it means you keep in track. And it also means you're able to say, my knitting matches the pattern. And when it comes to that, over time, you'll be able to say, knitting, pattern, knitting, pattern, knitting, pattern, it's matching and my head is be, is able to recognise one with the other. So and that will make being able to read what's on your needles and being able to read what row and what stitch is next much, much easier. Okay? So what was the third point has now become the fourth point. <laughs> I've confused myself here. Okay. As the stitches and the patterns that we're knitting become more complicated, we're going to reach points along the row which need a bit more attention. We might have a repeating pattern. We might be decreasing or increasing at certain points. Say, for example, you're knitting a jumper and there are darts in the front. Or you're knitting a point to reach a pocket on a cardigan. You're going to recognise that you're going to reach a point and you need to be able to see where you are. Um, you're decreasing at the sides at the same time. You're reaching a point where you come to a cable. And you don't want to just sit there and go, I need six stitches and then I need a cable. You need to be able to say, I'm knitting before I reach the cable. And then obviously that's part of the cable because I recognise that part of the knitting. And as you knit across the row, you can see the spots that will keep you on track. You can put stitch markers in. I don't have any sitting here, I don't think, because I put them away. Um, but when we knit something with lots of stitches on the row, or certain points where you do something on the row, um, for example, one of the beginner hats in Hat Knitting Bootcamp, it creates a point rather than a smooth crown. And by making that point at the top of the hat, we put stitch markers in so we understand where we're losing stitches on purpose. We're decreasing the number of stitches. So those stitch markers can be a real big help when you're not doing something for quite a few stitches. You don't want to suddenly lose count and then do the important things at the wrong point. So stitch markers can help as well. What could also help is being able to read your knitting. And you will see where you've done certain things on previous rows. And at certain points on previous rows, you'll be able to go, okay, well that's three rows below, so now here, three rows later, I've definitely reached the point, and it's at that stitch that I do a certain thing. 
it might sound overcomplicated, but when you're sitting there looking at your knitting and you're following your knitting pattern and you're writing on your post-it notes, it will be much easier for you to say, huh, okay, that correlates to the knitting pattern. That means I feel a lot more confident about reading the knitting because I've got a little bit of a clue here as it's written down in text. So you could definitely reach that point. You can watch as you're knitting across the row and you'll notice as you're knitting across the row, hang on a second, I didn't have to look at the knitting pattern because I could see it actually on my needles first. And that will happen more often. And then you go, oh, actually I'm getting this reading your knitting now. This is making a lot more sense and I am starting to understand it. So you don't have to worry about getting it perfect straight out the door without any little clues anywhere and without little tricks like the post-it notes, like having the pattern right next to you as you knit, like always marking down and writing on your post-it note, the next row is row 15. When you pick it up again, you know where you are. I always used to do that. And it made so much sense. I would have a separate post-it note. So I would be ticking off the tallies of the rows with one post-it. And on the next row, I would literally write next session at the top. And I would do row 15, row 32, row 37, row 61. And all of those meant that I knew where I was when I picked up my knitting again. And it was an extra bonus and kind of, oh, if I would pick up my knitting and go, I know where I am, before even looking at the post-it. That would happen over time. But definitely make those clues, make those tricks, make reading your knitting easier for yourself. It doesn't feel like such a brain squeeze. I've used that phrase before in a video and I think it makes sense. <laughs> It's a brain squeeze if you're trying to learn too much at once and it all becomes very complex. So, yeah, it is for experienced knitters. It's for more complex patterns that it gets harder. So you don't need to worry about really making it difficult for yourself. The most difficult thing you might do as a beginner knitter is decrease um, at certain points along a row when you're making a hat. You might be learning to do very simple cables and you need to just say, hey, I've reached the point on my row where that looks like a cable. And it's that kind of thing. It's a cable scarf. You just need to say that point and that point is where I do the cable. And you can look at your, your knitting and over this whole scarf, you'll suddenly be able to say, hey, I'm now seeing where I need to do the cable point, where I need to switch and twist the stitches over because that looks like six rows. Let me check it on my tally. Yes, that's right. I'm six rows past it. So I need to do it again. And then you'll reach another point and you go, definitely doing it here because it's six rows past it. And all of a sudden it feels a lot easier. You can play stitch markers to keep you on track as well. That's something to remember. It does not have to all be here on paper and reading it from your knitting. Um, the stitch markers can be a massive help too. You don't have to have fancy stitch markers for years, actually for decades. I used a, a piece of thread with a knot in it and I would just loop that over the needle. That was my stitch marker. So if you don't have stitch markers um, that you bought in a shop, just use a spare piece of yarn. We've all have leftover yarn when we knitted something. Use that. And when I was sewing up seams, I would keep the bits at the end that were that bit longer so they'd be ideal for stitch markers. And the bright colours too, you want to pick out a colour of stitch marker that's different to what you're knitting so it's very obvious when you reach it and you don't act mistakenly knit it. <laughs> Not saying I've done that ever, I probably have actually. <laughs> Reading your knitting means that you're going to see much sooner when you make a mistake. You will either be off stitch count when you reach the net point or you will be actually making the mistake and saying, hang on a sec, I'm doing that in the wrong place or that's the wrong stitch. 
for that point on the knitting. You'll be able to see it and go, hmm, because I'm reading my knitting, I'm looking at the stitches, I'm recognising that I'm off skew, it doesn't quite fit. I can look at it, I'm reading my knitting tells me that I've gone wrong. It doesn't need to be 15 rows up where you look at it and suddenly realise it doesn't look right. And then you have to go back and go, what does that fabric look like? What have I knitted? I don't understand it. So reading your knitting, learning the skill of reading your knitting can actually help tremendously as you knit. Going through the process of each stitch really helps you say, I know where I am, I know where I've been, I know where I'm going, and I know what's next. So I'm about to make a mistake and I'm not going to make that mistake. Or I just made a mistake two stitches down so I'm not in the right place here. So you can unravel just two stitches instead of 15 rows. Doesn't that sound better? So it could be something that you just challenge yourself to do. Take quiet time, time when you're not going to be disturbed, and sit and knit with your knitting and actually look at the stitches with much more interest. Is that a knit stitch? Is that a pearl stitch? How is it different? Why is it different? Do go and look at that video, do I knit or do I pearl now? And when you are looking at your stitches, that's a knit two together. Go and look at a tutorial as well, because seeing someone else do it, especially seeing someone like myself teach it, so that it's a much slower movement, you can actually learn a lot more about it. Also, you'll be able to learn what it looks like when you've done it. Always look at those complex stitches when you've done them, because then you'll be able to see when you're next about to do it, because you can see it, say, two, do two rows down. Okay, I'm at the right point, I need to do that again, because I can see it sat there in the knitting. You do that a lot for decreasing. Four rows down, I did the decrease before, so I now have to do it again. And you'll be able to identify, looking at the fabric, where that happened before, three rows have been knitted, and then it's obvious that you need to do it again. Now, let's talk about circular knitting. Because this is what I promised at the beginning. All I've talked about before is basically looking at straight knitting. And there are very much pieces of this which connect with circular knitting, but there are some differences. So when you're circular knitting, you're going round and round and round and round and round. It's not obvious that you're knitting a right side row and a wrong side row and a right side row and a wrong side row, which is what you do with straight knitting. You have to turn the needles as you knit each row. So it's very obvious that you're knitting an in-between row, an in-between row, say in-between cables, or an in-between row or a wrong side row for a particular stitch pattern like moss stitch or um, linen stitch for example. Those things need to be recognised when you're going one side or the other side. And ribbing as well, that's something that needs quite often can be done with a right side and a wrong side. When you're doing circular knitting, you're going round and round the needle and you're always looking at the right side of your knitting. So actually, it's something that might just say to you, is this going to be more difficult? Or is it going to be actually easier because I'm knitting in the round, because I'm knitting from the right side all the time? When you're knitting something like this, and knitting something with the colours in it, then most definitely it will feel easier because you're always looking at the right side, you're always able to see what happened last on the um, colourway, on the different colour pattern. So you'll be able to see what you did on the last row and you can look at it and go, well, I know what I need to do next on the colour row and I know where I am next in the colour pattern. So in that respect, sometimes colour knitting can be a lot easier knitted circularly because you're always looking at the colour pattern as you're knitting. When you are 
knitting something like a cable, for example. If you're knitting in the round for a cable, you might get to a point where you wonder what's next because you haven't had the beauty and I, I honestly feel that cabling with a right side and wrong side row is really helpful. Um, if you've ever done cabling before, you will know. You will do a row of stitches where you twist the stitches together to make the cable. Then you will go round and you will turn the knitting and you'll do a wrong side row. You will then turn the knitting and do a plain knit right side row. You'll do a wrong side row again and then the next row when you're looking at the right side of your knitting could well be a row where you actually approach the cables again. So you have the in-between rows of wrong side knitting, the back of the knitting, which kind of breaks up the cables and makes it a lot easier to tell what, what's next. If you're knitting in a circular way, if you're knitting round and round and round with the cables, it can be difficult to say, hang on a second, when did I last cable? What am I doing next? Because you've got to go around, say, three or five times before you do the cable again. And the twisting of the stitches, it is relatively recognisable which row it is that you did it. But it is for an experienced cable to be able to say, yeah, I'm looking at my knitting, I can read my knitting and tell which row exactly I did the cable on. I get it wrong. I get really confused sometimes. <laughs> and I have to count right from the cast on all the way up to go, which part of the cable am I on? I'm lost. What am I doing next? <laughs> if you have a right side and a wrong side and you're going right, wrong, right, cable, and you know where the cable is, which part of it's on, of course, keep track that there are some times when you forget to mark a line or something like that. It's a lot easier to tell where you are when you're doing right side and wrong side rows than it is if you're constantly just knitting the right side. So if you want to learn about reading your knitting, I would start with some straight needle knits, right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. It will make your life a lot easier. Um, and then you can start to understand your knitting much better. And circular knitting won't feel so difficult. If you want to knit a colour knitting something, and it suggests that you knit with a circular needle, then it might be better. It might well be better because you're looking at the colours and how the pattern is supposed to work but you can actually see it straight flat in front of you on the knitting rather than thinking I'm looking at the back, if I look at the front, which part am I doing next? Um, unless it's only a few rows of colour then that's fine. <laughs> it shouldn't be too difficult to do, you can do that all in one sitting. Okay, so that was reading your knitting. I hope that's helped you. And there are so many different things that will help you, whether you are doing a lace pattern, you can read your knitting and know whether you've got um, purposeful holes or decreases or all those sorts of things along a longer lace row. Once you learn that and you put your stitch markers in if you need to along the row, just to keep you on track, then that will be helpful too. Reading your knitting as you're doing lace work is really important. Cables, yes, cabling can be helpful as well. You can put your stitch markers in again. Also being able to read your knitting and understand what knit stitches and purl stitches are. That's when you can start to approach cable knitting and go, mm, actually, I know what my stitches are. I know what it looks like on my needles. Cable knitting is my next step. All of the decreases, whether you're knit two together, your KFB, whether you're using uh, slip one, knit one, part. Uh, PSSO and all that sort of stuff, which sounds very complicated, I know. All of those things will make it a lot easier for you. Because as soon as you can read what you've done in the last row, so you can read what you're doing on the current row, where you are on the row, so whether you are supposed to be doing those particular things, then all of that thing, all of that stuff will feel easier. And the colour knitting charts, as I said. Sometimes it is easier to do them when you're doing circular knitting, especially if it goes all the way through the knitting. It will feel a lot easier to do it on circle needles. We've talked about reading your knitting. 
I do hope that's been helpful. I haven't had a lot of this is how you do it because this is what your knitting looks like because I wanted to explain all of the parts of reading your knitting so that you can actually sit there with your knitting and look at it as I'm talking. I will leave some links to do I knit or do I purl now? And there's also a video that kind of gets confused with which row is next, which is how do I find the end of the row? Because if you're using different needles, then looking at the row and the stitches might be complicated. You're not sure which way you're going next. So let's look at that as well. I'll put that link below. Also, yarn demos. Um, uh, what's it called? I will leave the link for the PDF that shows you all of the stitches. If you've got all the links to the stitches either on the YouTube channel or on the blog and you can click through and see which one you want when you need it. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you again soon. Big thank you to the members for supporting the channel. If you want to join the membership, you get an extra two videos each month, including a Q and a And our main conversation over there is, what's on your needles now? Your work's in progress. If you have lots of things on your needles, then those videos inside the YouTube membership might actually help you. And help you figure out what you've got and where you go next with them. And of course, we're cheering each other on with our current as well. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now. Happy knitting.